Are you someone who just got Retroid Pocket 2? Are you someone who's looking for a retro art guide? Are you someone who don't want to spend 20 minutes on a video guide? Then this is just a video for you. Hello, my name is Jimmy and this is my quick start guide on how to use RetroArc emulator on Retroid Pocket 2 system. Before we jump in, I would like to mention that when you first boot up Retroid Pocket 2 system, you're going to be greeted with two RetroArcs. They are both RetroArcs but with two different versions. One in the left is RetroArc 1.5, one in the right is RetroArc 1.8.9. Without going too much in detail, one in the left should be used for Game Boy Advance, one in the right can be used for everything but Game Boy Advance. There is a good technical reason behind this, but just know that this is used for Game Boy Advance and on the right is used for all other emulators. So let's jump into the RetroArc emulator. This is the main screen. The first thing we want to change is the menu toggle keybind. So go over to the second column, go under input, go find hotkeys and go to menu toggle gamepad combo and choose start and select. This is the key combination you press if you want to call up a menu while in game, either to save state or load state or quit or to change to another game. There is another viable option such as LNR, but in games that require LNR to be pressed frequently, you might accidentally press LNR together and open up a menu, which you don't want. So I recommend pressing start and select because you don't often press select and start at the same time. And next, if you want to change the key mapping on other system functions such as save state, you can press down B on it and hold a button for 4 seconds. Now it has mapped the analog stick to the save state. To remove key mapping, simply press start. To change key mapping for player 1, go to port 1 controls Port 2 controls for player 2, port 3 controls for player 3. Now if you have multiple Bluetooth controllers connected to this device, this is where you can set up multiple players. After changing the setting, you have to go to the configuration file and select save current configuration as it doesn't save configuration automatically. To quick start a game, click load content from the first column. Go to storage. Select SD card 1, and this is your external SD card. My ROMs are in ROMs folder within different folders here. So let me play PlayStation 1. And I'll open some random game here. So after selecting the file, you have to choose the right core for each emulator. I already mentioned that this list of emulation core is listed in the video description. Now if you can't find the right core to install, you can navigate to download a core, press that, and choose the right core to download. Because I changed the key mapping for menu toggle, you can press select and start to call the menu while in game. And this is where you can save a state or load a state or restart or close content to add the entire system go over to import content choose scan directory notice that the external card can be found under root under storage under sd card one under wherever the roms folder is so let me add playstation one and this is the folder that contains all my PlayStation 1 files. Choose scan this directory and it will start scanning for PlayStation 1 ROMs. So once it's done, it's going to look like this. So I have added PlayStation 1, Mega Drive, Sega 32X, and SNES system. To display the frames per second on the top right, navigate to the second column find on-screen display, go to on-screen notifications, and turn on display frame rate. So this ends the quick start guide on how to set up RetroArc. If you have any questions regarding it, please leave it in the comments below. If you guys like the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. 
And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.